This is the 3D Battles of World Runner for the NES. Most people just call it 3D World Runner. It's an early Square game that predates Final Fantasy. In fact, it's a game I played a ton of even before I knew what Final Fantasy was. Even though it's a game that's seen a bit of success for Square, it's not one I hear many people talk about nowadays. So it's pretty safe to say this one is a bit of a hidden gem. Back when I was a kid playing this game, the 3D graphics look new and fresh, and they still look great today. The game has fast, fun, and frantic gameplay, and it's super challenging. 3D World Runner was released in 1987, a few years after the launch of the NES, and from the way it looks and plays, you can tell the developer Square really had a handle on programming games for the system. 3D World Runner is a true hidden gem on the NES, and a game I hope you'll consider checking out after watching this video. And it's today's subject on SideQuest. Among a group of Japanese companies that aimed to release games for the Famicom disk system, Square's goal was not unlike that of the other third parties. Nintendo's flagship console of the 80s was a hot ticket to success for developers at the time. Although Square was reluctant at first to develop for a home video game console, they saw the opportunity and tried their hand at the market. It did not go well for them at first. Just about all the games that they put out on the Famicom turned out to be commercial failures across the board until they managed to strike gold with the ironically titled Final Fantasy. There was one exception to these failures, at least. The exception would be what is released in North America as the 3D Battles of World Runner. Known more simply as 3D World Runner, this game managed to sell half a million copies back in the day, and for good reason. The game was designed mainly to show off the programming tricks of the developers. True to its name, your character runs in a faux 3D world, which is crazy to see coming off of something as technically primitive as the NES. But back then, it was state of the art. This kind of 3D trickery doesn't even come at a cost in performance. Everything on screen moves as smoothly as you could expect from a typical game on the system. It is pretty darn impressive for the tech they had to work with, and it looks nice to this day. As if the game wasn't already 3D enough, 3D World Runner even comes with a pair of 3D glasses that lets you see everything in 3D. Kinda. This was before things like 3D TVs and the Nintendo 3DS, so the closest there was to viewing in 3D at the time was with a pair of good old red and blue 3D glasses. And all it takes is a tap of the select button to enable the 3D mode in this game. Despite this being part of the appeal though, it can be rather hard to find a copy of 3D World Runner complete. Supposedly players would throw out the glasses if they didn't care enough about the mode. Either way, it's hard not to appreciate the effort that had been put into giving the game its seamless 3D style landscape. The game itself isn't too shabby either. Jack the World Runner is a space cowboy that is determined to defeat the serpent-like beasts that have been invading and taking over all sorts of planets. The planets are this game's various worlds, divided into four levels each. Beating one takes you straight to the next. 3D World Runner is an arcade style game where you dodge and shoot all the obstacles in sight and jump over large gaps. While easy to get into, it can be challenging to judge how you'd want to progress. Jack is unable to stop moving altogether, but he can slow down to a crawl for you to land safely. With gaps varying in width, however, you would have to make sure you don't over or undershoot your jump. On top of that, you have to avoid any enemies that may happen to lurk within the air. As you can expect from a game of the NES era, you'll have to really earn that ending in the grand scheme of things. At the end of each world, the game turns into a shooter as you are pitted against a boss similar to the ones found in Space Harrier. Actually, they seem to behave just like the bosses from Space Harrier. 3D World Runner did get some flack back in the day for seemingly ripping off Space Harrier. While the bosses do act too similar for comfort, it wouldn't really be fair to say the same about the levels that precede them. In fact, 3D World Runner's arcade-like qualities come from how active and hectic its level designs can get. The game is constantly in motion with nothing breaking its pace. It's more about you having to abide by its rhythm more than anything else. And that's what makes 3D World Runner fun to play. It consistently engages the player with its auto-scrolling action, and the fact that it's presented in such a wild fashion is icing on the cake. The difference in perspective also makes it a fresh changeup from the plethora of 2D games on the NES that rely on side-scrolling. It may have even been because of this 
that 3D World Runner has remained such a memorable title for retro gamers. With all the ways it has been able to stand out, it sticks out to us as an unmistakable gem in the NES library. It's well worth picking this one up if you're looking for a unique title among the many platformers the NES has to offer. The 3DS techniques that make up the game's environments play a big part in the fun you'd have taking on the series of levels it throws at you. You may also want to have a pair of 3D glasses around for extra measure. Now known today as Square Enix, the company has become a major household name for a few decades at this point in time. Between popular franchises like Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, and Tomb Raider, they have a large number of successes under their belt. During the days of the Famicom, however, there was only so much they could risk before being on the verge of financial peril. Final Fantasy may have been the game to get them out of the rut, but who knows if they could have gone that far without the success of 3D World Runner. If Final Fantasy was the game that saved Square, 3D World Runner may have actually been the game that gave them that push they desperately needed to make Final Fantasy in the first place. Hey, thanks for checking out this video all about the 3D Battles of World Runner for the NES. It's totally awesome how this game holds up today. It looks fantastic as compared to other 3D games on systems like the PS1 and N64 that haven't held up as well. It must be the game's mix of 2D sprites with a scrolling 3D background that help this game stay relevant graphically. Anyway, what's your thoughts on 3D World Runner? played it? Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments, or if my review has sparked your interest in the game, let me know that as well. Also, tell me about some games you feel are hidden gems on the NES. It may just be one that I'm already working on a review for. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you in my next video.